Hello and welcome to Feel This Pain Redo. Tonight I'm redoing my episode on Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome from 2015. Let's just jump right into it. So now Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is much more than just stretchy skin, okay? The skin itself can feel exceptionally velvety and your bones are a bit more bendy. What do I mean by that? Well, you can do things like this. So EDS is a category of multiple syndromes having to do with connective tissue disorders. While it's true that the most common symptoms involve joint hypermobility and skin hyperextensibility, the bones are in no way bendy. I got a good amount of flack for saying that, and yeah, it was a bad way to describe it. So I apologize for that. Some other things I didn't mention in the previous video are that there are 13 or 14 subtypes of EDS. EDS can be inherited, and part of how EDS can be diagnosed is through testing for the gene mutation responsible for it. The one exception to that being HEDS, which the genetic basis for is still unknown. People with EDS are much more prone to dislocations and subluxations, or, you know, partial dislocations, and that soft velvet-like skin is much more fragile and can bruise and tear easily. Just think about that for a second. Your skin can just tear like paper. Can you even imagine how painful that would be? And then more bad news, EDS also causes you to heal slower when you've been injured. Loose skin isn't as strong. It's not as taut. So if you get a cut and you get stitches, those stitches tend to come loose. So you don't heal well or properly and it gets worse. There is an even more debilitating version of this syndrome called vascular EDS. So vascular EDS, or VEDS, is characterized by arterial, intestinal, and or uterine fragility. And normally presenting signs in adults are usually vascular dissection or rupture, gastrointestinal perforation, or organ rupture. And like other forms of EDS, VEDS can be inherited, and each child of a parent with VEDS has a 50% chance of inheriting and developing the disorder. Now, as one would expect, persons with VEDS are encouraged to stay away from things like collision sports and surgery. Surgery is strongly discouraged unless absolutely necessary. A lot of doctors are big believers in physical therapy, the theory being that if you can strengthen the muscle fibers around the joints, that can help lessen the number and frequency of dislocations. So generally speaking, aerobic exercise like walking, cycling, water aerobics, and swimming are popular exercise recommendations for patients with EDS. Swimming and water exercises in particular as they can, in addition to cardiovascular improvements, help with proprioception, which is basically your body's awareness of where it is in space. And people with EDS often have problems with this. Prime example of what I'm talking about is closing your eyes and then touching your nose with your index finger. Proprioception is what allows that to happen. It's your body's awareness of where it is in relation to everything else around it. And you know, people without EDS can do it relatively easily, but for people with EDS, something that seemingly simple can be really challenging. So new information since the original video. As we know, EDS is often caused by genetic mutations, including the gene known as AEBP1. And that gene carries instructions on making a protein called ACLP, which plays a key role in both wound healing and tissue scarring. And in a study done last year, 2020, researchers at Boston University School of Medicine discovered that the mutation in AEBP1 prevents cells from releasing the ACLP protein. And since ACLP is important in maintaining strength and resistance in collagen fibers, this is potentially very important news in explaining how protein processing and protein secretion are connected to connective tissue disease. So that's potentially game-changing down the line as we learn more about how this all fits together. 
other new information um, has to do with something I brought up at the beginning of the video. I mentioned that HEDS doesn't yet have any identified genetic markers. So what the Ehlers-Danlos Society has done is they've created something called HEDGE, the Hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos Genetic Evaluation. This is basically an ongoing study that's goal is to obtain whole genome sequences for a thousand people diagnosed with HEDS in order to establish an underlying genetic causation. So this whole thing began back in 2019. It's continuing through the end of this year. Due to COVID, things have changed a little bit, but the hedge study has now shifted to a virtual recruitment model. And if you are interested in being considered for participation in the study, I'll leave a link down below for you that will take you right to their recruitment page where you can learn more about it. And that's it for this episode. Thank you for spending time with me tonight. I hope you got some valuable information out of that. If you like this type of content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Make sure to click on the bell to get notifications of when I upload new things. If you're a longtime subscriber to the channel and there's another one of my Feel This Pain videos that you would like to see redone, let me know in the comments below and just Thanks for being here. Uh, as always, you know, liking, subscribing, sharing the video helps defeat the algorithm. So if you can do that, that would be greatly appreciated. Until next time, I'm Ken McKim. You take care.